Let's shed some light on true history regarding plant medicine and the scarcity that's happening, especially since the FDA has now a list of so many herbs that they're looking to ban the use, probably because of its ability to heal naturally. Now, many call herbal medicine alternative medicine, but I want to reiterate that it's actually the original form of medicine because modern medicine is alternative, meaning it's opposite to native. So traditional medicine is actually native to us. And anything natural cannot be patented, meaning no money can be made from anything that's God created. And over the last century, the dramatic decline in health, I believe, is directly aligned with the reduction of the use of plant medicine, which should be a natural part of our diets and our lifestyle. Our bodies actually have special receptors to their compounds, so we are literally born with abilities that can only be unlocked with the right plant substance. That's how connected we are to earth and why it's so important for true health to actually get closer and back to our roots of plant medicine. The big pharma sadly came in and took over, especially in the Western world, and actually even passed laws making it illegal to practice herbal medicine which is, once again, the original form of medicine, the native form of healing. They used the argument that herbal medicine can be dangerous and that they did this for the greater good of the public. However, there was tens of thousands of more deaths caused by modern medicine. So just to give you an example, in 1992 to 1998, there was on average 37 deaths per year for herbal medicine. Compared to the same period, pharmaceutical drugs caused over 100,000 of documented deaths. Like I said, there's no profits to be made on herbs, but there's so much profit to be made by anything that's lab created. In the early 1900s, the funding for homeopathic medical schools ended. And the only way now to learn medicine in school is the allopathic way, which is focused on pharmaceuticals and far more invasive strategies. So just to give you a little bit of a background, the business story of Western medicine starts with who other than John Rockefeller. John Rockefeller is widely considered the wealthiest American of all time and the richest person in modern history. Rockefeller is probably most famous for securing a monopoly in the America's oil market, but many people don't actually know the whole story. By the turn of the 20th century, Rockefeller controlled about 90% of all petroleum refineries in the States, in America, through ownership of what's called the Standard Oil Corporation um, around 1900. And the science world was getting excited about petrochemicals and the ability to create so many different compounds from oil. And some of the first products that they actually created was plastic. And we also even had organic chemists that knew that oil had the potential to create far more than just plastic bags. Now, during the same era, scientists were doing incredible work of understanding the basic mechanics of life and human health. And it was during this time that they started to realize essential vitamins were being discovered, like vitamin B1, B2, biotin, vitamin C, A, D, etc. And they started to see that vitamins took it took a huge step forward and enabled simple vitamin remedies to cure conditions that were caused by vitamin deficiencies like scurvy and rickets. And there's so many others. But of course... Scientists were also involved in researching, recreating the synthetic versions of these. If you don't know this, by 1935, vitamin C became the first uh, artificially synthesized vitamin. Rockefeller saw this as a big opportunity with the possibility that vitamins and medications could be developed from petroleum. He saw the chance to control and monopolize this industry, petroleum, chemical, and medical. And of course, Petrochemicals were ideal from a business perspective because they can be patented. They could be owned, sold for high profits. When these legal changes came in place, Rockefeller started funding medical schools all over America on the strict condition that they only teach allopathic medicine. Through the power of his huge grants and money, the team systematically dismantled the whole curriculum of the medical school, removing any mention of the healing power of herbs or natural treatments treating diets or anything else naturally was removed, completely removed from the medical programs. And then after removing traditional medicine from schools, Rockefeller made sure to secure his monopoly by launching a huge smear campaign against the competitors. So homeopathy and natural medicines were discredited and demonized through the newspapers and all over media, which they also own. And some doctors were even jailed for using natural medicine treatments, including treatments that had been used for decades and decades safely and effectively. In a very short period of time, the medical systems were completely changed. All the students were taught now allopathic. Medicine was now defined as a process of describing 
And then you had the famous, a pill for an ill mindset created. The system continues today as the big pharma and they make large donations to the medical schools in exchange for teaching the medical students to use the patented drugs. It's all part of the system. And many alternative treatments are actually completely criminalized. For example, by law, it is illegal to treat cancer with any other modality except for chemotherapy, surgery, or radiation. It's actually pretty much a felony from a medical practitioner to treat cancer with anything but these three modalities. Why is that the case? Follow the money. The average cost of cancer treatment is $150,000. So clearly Rockefeller and his people were keen to keep the monopoly as one. And of course, the American Cancer Society was founded by none other than John Rockefeller in 1913. 